Another important cycle is the carbon cycle. And this one is very important for life because remember, we talked about the fact that photosynthesis traps carbon dioxide into sugar, and sugar is the currency of energy of life. So all the animals and all the plants and all the fungus and all the bacteria, everything in the ecosystem relies on the carbon cycle. In fact, the simplest version of the carbon cycle that involves life is basically when the carbon dioxide that is in the atmosphere, CO2, gets transferred through the process of photosynthesis, so P for photosynthesis, into life. Now, then it would be transferred throughout the food web, through feeding behaviors and decomposition and things like that. But then ultimately, through cell respiration and decomposition, that carbon may be again released into the atmosphere. So respiration and decomposition both will release the carbon dioxide back in the atmosphere. So this is as, as simplest as the carbon cycle gets. And that's what involves life in terms of the carbon cycle. But there are way, way more complex than that because you may ask yourself, why is there carbon in the atmosphere in the first place? Now, carbon's been there ever since the beginning of the history of the world when the volcanic activity on the early Earth added carbon dioxide to the atmosphere. In fact, the original atmosphere was very rich in carbon dioxide. It wasn't until life came in with photosynthesis that the carbon dioxide started being trapped from the atmosphere into the biosphere. So that's what photosynthesis does. It traps carbon dioxide from the atmosphere into the biosphere. By the way, photosynthesis is also called carbon fixation because it's trapping the carbon from the air into the life. So it's fixating, it's holding it in place, it's uh, you know stapling it to life. So that's why it's called carbon fixation. Then feeding transfers the carbon dioxide throughout the food web. And then cellular respiration, when animals do their activities and plants do their activities, releases that back in the atmosphere. When things die, the carbon that's in the carcass gets decomposed and also releases into the atmosphere. It is possible that though that some of that carbon from doing the decomposition process actually stays in the soil. Now, the soil might be moved around by processes like weathering and erosion, and then that carbon may end up somewhere else, maybe end up in the water, maybe end up in rocks. Now, that's called deposition, when the carbon either settles down lower or when it goes somewhere else, like in the ocean, for example. Now, over long, long periods of time, that carbon might become part of rocks, carbonate rocks. There's a lot of carbon in rocks. Now, that carbon that's in rocks can be uplifted to the surface later, and if they get melted and part of a volcano, goes back to the atmosphere. Erosion can also break down rocks, the carbonate rocks, and then release that carbon into the atmosphere too. So, uh, respiration and decomposition are not the only ways that carbon goes back to the atmosphere. Also, when there's things like forest fires, that also burns life and it puts the carbon back to the atmosphere as well. So natural processes will also add carbon back to the atmosphere. So it's not just uh, um, us doing it. But we also do it. We also burn fossil fuels. By the way, animals uh, don't necessarily have to die and become decomposed. Sometimes they actually get fossilized into things like natural gas, oil, coal. That process is called fossilization. And those fossil fuels are supposed to stay on the ground for millions of years before they get, you know, uh, uplifted or maybe part of a volcanic activity and return to the atmosphere. But instead, we mine that and get that out and basically drill that, burn that back into the atmosphere faster than they should have been there, which changes the balance of carbon dioxide in the ecosystem. And since carbon is a greenhouse gas which traps heat, that could cause global warming, which changes the climate of the world. Very important concept. By the way... This, these things we've been talking about happen both in the land and in the water. Uh, photosynthesis will happen in the water, uh, de decomposition, respiration, feeding, deposition, all of those things will happen as well in the water as they happen in the air. And in fact, since water is the majority of the world, it happens more in the water than it happens in the land. So these are the steps of the carbon cycle, and I hope it all makes sense. But remember, that there are several reservoirs for any one given thing in life. And the carbon cycle is a perfect example of these things moving between reservoirs. So you have carbon in the atmosphere, you have carbon in the geosphere, you have carbon in the biosphere, you have carbon in the hydrosphere. And throughout the carbon cycle, these things will move from one to the other. Carbon is cycling between the atmosphere to the biosphere, from the biosphere into the hydrosphere, which is the water, or the geosphere, which is the land, and from the geosphere back to the hydrosphere or the atmosphere and so forth. So each of these processes is moving carbon from one of the areas of ecology to another. Photosynthesis captures from the atmosphere to the biosphere, right? Human activity gets it from the, the geosphere, the fossil fuels, into the atmosphere again. Uh, volcanic activity gets an erosion, can get it from the geosphere 
to the to the atmosphere, or erosion can also put it into the bio, the, the, the hydrosphere, throw carbon into the water. Uh, you have cell respiration and decomposition, which takes it from the biosphere back into the atmosphere or into the into the soil, which is the geosphere. You have feeding, which moves it around the the biosphere. You have settling or deposition, which moves moves it into the, the geosphere from whatever source it's happening. You have fossilization, also moves it from the biosphere to the geosphere. You have uplift, which moves within the geosphere, higher into the geosphere. All of these are different processes which move the carbon around in nature.